My name is Bill Lubish, and the story I'm about to tell began with my interest in collecting military dog tags and the instruments used in their production. The Department of the Army, not long after the Civil War, began issuing a personal ID tag to be worn by all military personnel. This need arose from the many unidentified bodies left to unmarked graves after the battles of the Civil War. The tag would provide information for the remains of the dead to be identified and returned to their next of kin. During my collecting ventures, I was given several World War II GI dog tags that were recovered from a field on the island of Corregidor in the Philippines. The tags were well weathered and tarnished, but they were still legible enough to give up the information intended in their creation. The soldier's name, serial number, blood type, and in some cases the name and address of a mother or a close relative. I have returned several to their rightful owners, each with his individual story of war atrocities experienced in the Bataan Death March and Japanese prisoner of war camps. One individual by the name of Carl Biggs of Chattanooga, Tennessee, spoke of his ordeal as a soldier and prisoner of war. Mr. Carl Biggs. I was in the 803rd Aviation Engineers, U.S. Army, 1942. We maintained the roads at O'Donnell on Bataan in the Philippines. I came down with malaria and was shipped to Corregidor. The night before the surrender of Bataan, we held on to Corregidor for six weeks. The shelling stepped up. They had all of our guns plus what they had of their own. It was hairy. They had 27 batteries firing at us at one time. They blanketed us. You had to stay under cover all the time. They would shoot at three people with one artillery shell. We ran out of shells. The Japanese had all the planes. They had all the guns. We was eating mules and whatever. We were all starved and in bad shape. Me and my buddies covered us with a mattress. Anything to slow down a bullet or shrapnel. A chunk caught me in the knee. After the surrender, you was at risk at all times. We were considered like dogs, or less. Japanese officers expected us to salute and bow to them. If you didn't, you got beat out of you right then. I saw three Americans killed at one time, shot dead. Saw people beat with two-by-twos. Saw people stamped to death. I believe I left my dog tag on Corregidor. I remember the chain had broken and I wore it around my neck on a string. We were put on a ship for 32 days, just bread and water. Things got worse. 1,700 prisoners were crammed into the hold of the ship, no bathroom. People were dying and killing each other. We were taken to Manchuria, worked as slaves. I suffered frostbite, lung damage, very berry. I saw men suffering so bad from beriberi, they were ramming their heads against the walls or putting their feet in freezing water just to stop the pain. I was freed by the Russians three and a half years later in 1945. This dog tag brings back a host of memories. I'm going to get it silver plated and wear it around my neck again. Mr. Biggs's dog tag has survived a tragic period of World War II and over 50 years of exposure to the elements. Some twist of fate has brought this tag back into his hands. No one will ever know the reason for its journey, but the forces of nature and God have directed it back to him. It is though the same spirit and determination that made him a survivor in World War II is embodied and symbolized in his tag. The irony of it all is that the dog tag was intended by the military to identify and find the dead. In Mr. Biggs's case, the tag has identified and found the living. They are not 
near yet. We are waiting for God only knows what. How about a chocolate soda? Not many. Not near yet. Lots of heavy fighting going on. We've only got about one hour, 20 minutes before we may have to give up by noon. We don't know yet. They are throwing men and shells at us and we may not be able to stand it. They have been shelling us faster than you can count. 